This is Escape the Cubicle. My name is Graham Brown. Let's talk about why we're here. Let's talk about the goal of all goals, as Socrates calls it, and that is happiness. So happiness is the reason why we do everything. It's why we get a job. It's why we earn money. It's why we go on vacation, because we want to be happy. And as you know, common literature says, whether it be in song or in books, money can't buy you happiness. What's the point of being rich if you are unhappy, etc., etc.? We are well aware of it. So why is it that most people feel, you know, if you were to rank your happiness, most people wouldn't be 8 or 9 or 10 out of 10. And I think one of the reasons is, is that we make the search for happiness a lot more difficult than it has to be. So, you know, I've tried everything, yoga, meditation, veganism, making money, losing money. And one thing I discovered was that happiness is not a state, but it's a verb. And what I mean by that is happiness doesn't come naturally. It's not a state of being. It's something that you have to do. Happiness comes as a result of what you are doing. And through many years of discovery, I learned that happiness is simply doing more of what makes you happy. So if that's the case, how do we create a lifestyle that allows us to do more of what makes you happy? Well, as a child, it's so easy to be happy, right? I mean, you can see children feeding ducks or chasing a plastic bag, flying about in the wind, and they can just be happy. It's so simple. But when we grow up, we learn about what other people think. And that instills fear in us. You know, the author Matthew Ricard, Buddhist monk, author of happiness, said that even though he was once described as the happiest person in the world, happiness comes as the result of training. It's a skill. It's a life skill. It's not a state which is instilled in us, especially for us adults. So what does that skill mean? How do we become happier? Well, it starts inside. Like those things I talked about, feeding the ducks or chasing the paper bag, whatever it may have been. As we get older, we start to think that happiness comes from the outside. You know, what your friends will think when you rock up in your new sports car. You think that's going to make you happy. You think becoming famous or getting 10 million Twitter followers is going to make you happy. Or you're looking young and glamorous like those girls in Sex in the City. It's going to make you happy. Or getting promoted to vice president is going to make you happy. But they don't. And this is what the cubicle does. It's got us in this bind, this belief system that happiness comes from the outside. And when we escape that, we realize that happiness is internal. And it starts with ourselves. So to go back to this whole idea of it being a skill... Well, think of it like this. All the crap that life throws at you on a daily basis. Think of all those things. Other people, emergencies, crisis, something going on at work, the latest reorg in the office. Think of all those things. Those things are like gravity. Think of those things. Put them into a bucket and call that gravity. And your goal to be happy is to fly. But... These things drag you down incessantly on a day-by-day basis. That's what gravity does. It's non-stop. It's relentless. So to fly, you must beat your wings. And beating your wings means practicing the things that make us happy. So, for example, in my situation, you know, one of the things that makes me really happy is endurance sports. I love... Ironman triathlon, swim, bike, run. And you can hear about it in my other podcast, endurancefm.com. I love these things. I love entrepreneurialism and I love endurance sports. Now, living in London, you've got the weather and you've got the traffic, which conspire against you to make 
swim, bike, run, a challenge. So if those things make you happy, how can you do more of those things? Well, you can't in that lifestyle, within those parameters, you're limited. But what if I move to a place where I could do those things every day? You know, you can't go swim in the ocean in London. There isn't an ocean. <laughs> and even if it is summer, it's not warm enough, right? And then you've got to cycle, you've got the traffic, and you've got the big arterial roads like the M25. And then there isn't the spaces to run. But what if you could live somewhere where you could do those things? So that's a what-if question. And... Bob Dylan once wrote that a man is a success if he gets up in the morning and goes to bed at night and in between he does what he likes. To me, that's a definition of success. And it starts with asking that what if question. So what if I could live in a place where I could do the things that I love, do more of the things that make me happy? Okay, well, it's possible. I could go and live somewhere like that. If I was living in London, I could move to a place like Hawaii, where, you know, it's the home of Ironman Triathlon. I could move to Australia, or I could move to the Canary Islands, which is the home of endurance sports for Europe. So if I could do that, what if I moved there? What kind of business would I have to own and run to be able to do that? So now you're asking these what if questions. What happens is, is what you've effectively done in beating your wings, flying, countering gravity, is you said, I want to put happiness, lifestyle at the top of my pyramid of needs as a lifestyle entrepreneur. And now what I'm going to do is re-engineer my business around those needs. I'm not going to shoehorn my happiness and my lifestyle into the small space left to me by my business. I'm going to flip that on its head and say business is going to be the vehicle to get me there. It's not the other way around. Business is the means, not the end. The end is happiness. And I'm going to enjoy that right here, right now. So that's what I did. I said, what kind of business? What if I could live here? What would it take? And me and my family, we sat down and worked it out. You know, I sold up my interest in a business and we went and traveled the world for five years, lived 18 months in Lanzarote so I could do the Ironman triathlon and train with people who are passionate about endurance sports and elite athletes and go out and train every day. 3,000 hours of sunshine, you know, all year round warm weather hardly any traffic on the roads, places to run, places to swim. It was paradise. That made me happy. It wasn't being something. It wasn't a state, a mental state that I achieved. It was doing simply on an everyday basis more of what I love doing, which is getting on my bike or running or swimming. It's that what if question. It's dangerous. Because once you start asking what if, things fall apart beautifully. In most people's cases, I think it's the other way around, the tail wags the lifestyle dog. They fit lifestyle around work and they get stressed and they save up money so they can go and enjoy the two weeks in the sun every year just to decompress from working 50 weeks of hard labor for the rest of the year. But if you consciously set out and put lifestyle at the top. That is the key to happiness. My name's Graham Brown. This is Escape the Cubicle.